and welcome back to Skypothesis. This time we are excited to showcase the Tonal Scholar, a Red Guard Scholar of the Dwemer who takes full advantage of several Creation Club content packs, including Forgotten Seasons, Arcane Archer Pack, Red Guard Elite Armaments, and several others. We've made functionally similar builds to this with the Relic Hunter and the Art Thief, but the more time we spent with this character, the more unique he felt from both of those. So we are excited to share the story and progression we've written for him, as it has quickly become one of our favorite playthroughs. As always, we have included timestamps throughout the video so you can easily navigate between backstory, roleplay, gear, special moves, and more, but we hope you stick with us through the whole video. And just a reminder to check out our merch shop if you want to further support the channel and get some sweet swag, and check out our Discord to join a community of like-minded roleplay fans. And now, without further ado, let's jump into the backstory of the Tonal Scholar. Over 20 years ago, the Thalmor withdrew from Hammerfell. The Red Guards banded together and had successfully fought back their oppression. A secretive faction called the Remnants were tasked with enforcing the Second Treaty, which held the Thalmor accountable and fought them off in the shadows. Though some Remnants were warriors by trade, others were volunteers from other professions, joining only because they had a desire to protect their country. The Tonal Scholar was one of these volunteers. He was very young at the time, and in spite of being trained by the Remnants, was never assigned any task above informant. He wasn't a natural warrior, but his sharp mind helped him rapidly advance in the world of academia. He left the Remnants at age 20 and became the youngest professor of ancient history in all of Sentinel. His greatest desire is to uncover the mysteries of the Dwemer and began collecting artifacts to examine. The science of metallurgy was interesting to him, and he made it his goal to unravel the specific formula for Dwemer alloys. There were volumes written by previous scholars on the how of Dwemer metal, but hardly anything on the why. Why does it behave so differently from other metals? Why doesn't it rust or corrode like it should? Metallurgists have spent centuries recreating the formulas for Dwemer metal, but their creations just never outlived those of the Dwemer. In an investigation, the Tonal Scholar proposed a bold theory to his peers. He proposed that the disappearance of the dwarves and the lingering fingerprint they left on the land were related. The brass creations of the dwarves were not some secret formula that couldn't be rediscovered. They were created by the hands of the race that vanished, and were, for some reason, not bound to the slow decay of time, or at least not at the same rate. They instead decay according to proximity to Vardenfell. He then presented artifacts gathered from around the world to expand on his theory and noted how the further away from Red Mountain the artifact was found, the more corrupted and impure the metal had become with time. Even automaton behavior changed with proximity to Red Mountain. His peers were not convinced, and his theory was quickly dismissed. He was absolutely furious. How could they be so blind to the evidence that he worked so hard to gather? He believed in his theory so much that he was willing to let his reputation and career suffer for it. He immediately began making plans to journey to Vardenfell to personally investigate the Dwemer ruins around Red Mountain. Unfortunately, the dawn of the Fourth Era was marked by a massive eruption of Red Mountain. Two centuries is very recent history in the grand scale of the world, and he found that certain cities written about in his tomes had been completely buried by the ash, and what few locales remained accessible had been thoroughly ransacked by desperate reavers. When he arrived at the Towers of Arkingthand, he had no choice but to pay a band of reavers for protection to gain access, which cost him greatly. After a few short years, he found little progress and was financially destitute. Still, he refused to give up, and set his sights on Skyrim, which was the next most promising destination. When he wandered into the Imperial Ambush, he had already spent what little wealth he had, so he didn't lose much financially. As he rested his head on the chopping block, his only regret was that he didn't have enough time to publish his work. The second chance he was granted during the terror and confusion of the attack filled him with a new sense of determination, and something inside him snapped. His reputation was destroyed by his peers, he was drained of his wealth by the Reavers of Morrowind, and the Imperials callously threw him to the chopping block without due process. With his backstory in mind, he is not a natural warrior, but he was trained in his youth with the Remnants and remembers how to move unseen. He learned the basics of archery and commits to never again be caught defenseless. He will sharpen his senses and create powerful tools and explosives to aid him, and also learn hand-to-hand -hand combat if he is ever disarmed. This frozen land is dangerous, and he knows now what it takes to survive on his own. He came here to study ancient ruins, and he will never again let anything stand in his way. 
His first expedition is, unfortunately, not related to the dwarves. After Alvor's kindness to him in Riverwood, he agrees to travel to Whiterun and request aid on the town's behalf. In doing so, he gets tasked with recovering a dragonstone from a Nordic crypt. Hardly worthy of my particular talents, he huffs to himself upon leaving Whiterun, but he goes through with the expedition, as he figures it would be a good way to help him learn more about Nordic culture and Nordic history. The discovery that he is dragonborn is confusing for this scholar. I am a redguard of the West Sands, he thinks to himself, why would I have the blood of a dragon? He isn't convinced at first, and it takes the assurance of Jarl Balgruf and then his meeting with the Greybeards before he accepts it as truth. He has his own objectives and isn't interested in becoming a hero of the people. His is a mind of logic, not emotion, so he is hesitant to accept the role of Dragonborn and keeps his identity a secret to avoid unwanted obligations. He does complete the main quest, but does so slowly and at his own pace. His primary allied faction is the College of Winterhold, where he gains access to the ancient Arcanium and the knowledge of his fellow scholars. Here he functions less as a mage and more as a scholar. Spellcasting is not something he does and not a skill he cares to develop. He prefers to create with his hands, and we spent more time at the Atronach Forge for this character than we ever have before. We use lots of elemental arrows from the Arcane Archer pack, and you'll need to craft lots of frost, fire, and void salts here. As he progresses through the College of Winterhold questline, he develops a broader interest in the history of the land rather than just that of the dwarves. Though they are still his primary reason for being here, he begins to view the ancient Nords of Sarthal, the Snow Elves turned Twisted Falmer, and the ancient Dwemer cities all as being related. He was not expecting such lingering Falmer presence in the deep caverns of the world, and takes an interest in their history due to their relationship with the dwarves. He adds some specific Falmer artifacts to his list to acquire. The Tonal Scholar does become Archmage, which might be a difficult roleplay choice, since he is not a mage at all, but we've touched on this approach in past builds, but it's especially applicable here. The Archmage doesn't have to be the most powerful wizard. They have a responsibility to manage arcane powers, and the Tonal Scholar is more than capable of filling this role. He understands magic, he just doesn't use it. He has proven himself capable of defending the college, and most importantly, defending its collection of ancient knowledge. Another allied faction is the Thieves' Guild. Though not a thief by nature, he initially joins the Thieves' Guild as a way to fence valuable loot and receive tips on possible heists. His training with the remnants in his youth gave him a leg up in this world, and made him comfortable moving through the shadows. As he learns about the former guildmaster, Gallus, he believes they could have been good friends had they known each other while he was alive. For this build, we decided to create a dedicated part of the video to describe his most important expedition for ancient artifacts, beginning with the mystery of the Forgotten Metal Ethereum. While in the Arcanium, he happens upon a book, The Ethereum Wars. He initially laughs at the author, Terran Dreth's claim that the fall of the dwarven cities of Skyrim was caused by internal disputes over Ethereum, which the author acknowledges most modern scholars consider little more than a curiosity. However, as he keeps reading, he realizes that Arkingthams, the great research center, was actually within Skyrim's borders. Curiosity piqued, he sets off immediately for the Reach to begin Lost to the Ages, where he will eventually receive both Zephyr and the Ethereal Staff, two fantastic dwarven artifacts. Aided by the ghost of Katria, he works his way through the first dwarven ruin. During the expedition, he finds various tonal locks. With the excited fervor only a dedicated scholar could have, he describes in great detail his theories on how they function to Katria. Though these expeditions are proving dangerous, the tonal scholar feels alive. He journeys all across Skyrim to find the shards of Ethereum necessary to unearth the great Ethereum Forge. He visits Deep Folk Crossing, Rald Bathar, and Mazolf before finally reaching the ruins of Bathalft and confronting the Forge Master. He can't believe that the theories of Ethereum were true, and realizes that Skyrim was a, really a hotbed of dwarven activity, and he could garner volumes of knowledge through these expeditions. Excitedly, he chases a rumor to the next expedition in the runoff caverns. The next expedition, Forgotten Seasons, features a fantastic Creation Club questline that lets the Tonal Scholar delve into the most fascinating ruin he's ever seen. A malfunctioning Dwemer weather machine has caused intense weather patterns within the ruins, so intense that locals believe a curse lay upon the caves. During the expedition, the Tonal Scholar explores a vast network of weather-themed trials, taking his admiration for the ancients to new heights. Along the way, he discovers a wealth of valuable loot, 
He takes particular interest in the dwarven dronefly, a small automaton that flits around him giving him resistance to poison and increased stamina. In the various nooks and crannies of Vardenkind he finds pieces of a dwarven horse and seasonal visages that fit into the elegant dwarven crown. We took our time with this creation, exploring every corner to be sure that we found everything that he would find interesting for his research. We have to give major props to Trainwiz for creating possibly our favorite creation club questline ever. It's the perfect expedition for a character like the Tonal Scholar, and we simply didn't want it to end. His next expedition takes him on the Ashen Island of Solstheim, where he was drawn after a strange encounter with a pair of cultists. The thought of someone trying to assassinate him for being a false dragonborn didn't bode well with him at all, and he set off on a boat at once to investigate. While searching the island, he discovers a few dwarven ruins, and curiosity gets the better of him. With their proximity to Vardenfell, he finds that he simply must explore them thoroughly before engaging with this Mirak, as they could hold vital information on his theory of Dwemer metallurgy. One ruin, Kagrimaz, sets him on the expedition the Kagrimaz Gauntlet, where he will eventually be rewarded with a steadfast dwarven companion and the dwarven black bow of fate. He is intrigued by the complicated nature of the trial, with a central resonance pedestal controlling each stage. He scours the island for resonance gems as he progresses through the Dragonborn questline. The first is found in Kagrimaz itself, lootable from the leader of the Reavers you ambush. One is sold by Riva Sarvani, the owner of the Siltstrider near Telmithrin. Another is in a chest by the Nuchardak Aqueduct. The final gem lays next to another artifact he adds to his collection, the Visage of Mizund in the ruins of Falpathars on the western edge of the island. Throughout these trials, the tonal scholar feels himself stretched in ways he never would have expected. His cunning and stealth are not enough. He must be quick on his feet and prove that he has developed the combat skill to progress. These Solstheim Dwarven Ruins are a challenge, and we recommend building out the Tonal Scholar's full quiver before diving in. Speaking of his quiver, he will switch between fire, shock, frost, telekinesis, and just standard self-crafted Dwarven arrows frequently. And it's nice to roleplay that they all come from the same quiver. On the subject of elemental arrows, the Creation Arcane Archer pack really helps this build shine. In order to craft as many elemental arrows as possible, you will need to frequently visit the Atronach Forge, where he converts gems into fire, frost, and void salts, allowing him to craft elemental arrows. Since they are somewhat difficult to craft, we found ourselves primarily using standard dwarven arrows over the elemental variants, unless the situation called for more firepower. The telekinesis arrows are made with void salts, and integral to this build's identity. The Tonal Scholar is smart and loves setting traps to gain the upper hand and catch his opponents off guard. He will frequently fire off a few telekinesis arrows around a corner before luring out an opponent into their firing range. It's incredibly satisfying to set traps this way and stacking multiple arrows on top of each other becomes super powerful. One Thieves Guild mission sends him on a criminal expedition, Hard Answers. This quest sees him sneak through the Dwemer Museum and Kalsomo's Tower in Markarth. Though primarily a level-headed man, the Tonal Scholar can't stand Kalsomo's pompous attitude in regards to his excavations and takes petty joy in stealing some of his artifacts from the museum, most notably the Dwarven Puzzle Cube and Spider Control Rod. The final and most important expedition is to reclaim all three tools of the great Dwemer Tonal Architect, Kagranak. Sunder and Wraithguard are obtainable in the Creation Club quest Legends Lost, and Keening is obtainable at the end of Arniel's Endeavor. These are the legendary tools that Kagranak used to trigger one of the most significant events in all of Tamriel's history, the disappearance of the dwarves. He predicts Arniel's intentions and also the outcome of his experiment, but allows him to go through with it in the interest of scholarship. A more morally upright character may have tried to intervene, but this was undeniable proof of the dwarves' fate and the potency of the tools they left. However, these three tools of Kagranak were just that, tools, specifically created to interact with the heart of Lorcan. He keeps them locked away in the Archmage's tower, never again to be used in an attempt to gain the power of the gods. He has an overlapping interest with the ancient races that had close dealings with the dwarves, the Tribunal, who crossed blades with the Dwemer on Vardenfell, and the ancient enslaved race of the Snow Elves. Falmer artifacts such as the Four Books of the Forgotten Veil vale and Ariel Shield and Bow become important to him as well, and the Dawnguard questline gives him an excellent opportunity to obtain these relics. While he does keep dangerous artifacts at the college, he is a collector at heart and lines the walls and shelves of his home in Markarth with his favorite pieces. 
For his armor, we are combining two of the Creation Club sets to create the Architect's Mail. He wears the Dwarven Mail chest piece from the Alternate Armors pack, and the Remnant's Hood and Boots from the Redguard Elite Armaments pack. He will also wear the Dwarven Brawler's Gauntlets. These gauntlets really tie in the look for us, even though we aren't focusing on unarmed combat. We have also chosen to equip the Tonal Scholar with the Thief Backpack. In addition to helping him look like a prepared expeditionist, it also ups his carry weight capacity by 75 points and makes lockpicking 15% easier. One of the best parts about Creation Club content is how quickly you can obtain the gear you need to get fully kitted out. To get the mail, head up the hill to the south of Iverstead, and you will find the dead arena fan with an axe in his back. Read a note in his inventory to start the quest. To get the remnants gear, head to the village of Shore's Stone and get in a fistfight with the guy standing outside the blacksmith's house. The thief backpack and dwarven brawler's gauntlets can be purchased randomly from vendors. For auxiliary gear, he will wear the Ring of Surroundings for 20% better sneaking, a quest reward for helping a guard overcome his skooma addiction in the quest Clearheaded, and an amulet of Fortify Archery. For his weapons, we are mostly using Zephyr, but the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate is another good option. The Dwemer crossbows are thematically fitting, but we actually chose not to use them for the sole reason of telekinesis arrows. If there were telekinesis bolts, we totally would. These wonderful magic arrows are a huge part of this build's identity, and it's totally worth it to us to stick to archery. Crossbows have more stopping power, but bows fire silently, and fire faster, which is great for stealthy characters who want to quickly stack telekinesis arrows. We also absolutely loved occasionally engaging in fisticuffs with the dwarven brawler gauntlets. Against low-level bandits and wolves, it helps him conserve his valuable arrows. He's no Khajiit, but it's enough to get cool kill cams on weaker enemies, which is totally worth it in our opinion. For the roleplay, he's fastened these blades on his wrists so he cannot be disarmed and will never be without at least some protection. If you shout marked for death on a target first, you can get a lot more utility out of these gauntlets on higher level bandits. Moving on to the Tonal Scholar's stats and perk spread. We leveled with an even split between health and stamina. For his standing stone, we are taking the steed stone for two reasons, one for the weightless armor for unhindered movement, and two for the 100 extra points of carry weight. Expeditions to Dwemer Ruins are always a profitable venture, so the Tonal Scholar wants to gather everything he can, and those scrap metal pieces get heavy really quickly. Finally, we are playing as a Red Guard for the roleplay, the racial ability adrenaline rush, and you get a head start on the smithing and archery skill trees. By the time you reach level 40, you will want the following perks. In Archery, take all 5 in Overdraw, Eagle Eye, both in Steady Hand, Power Shot, Quick Shot, all 3 in Critical Shot, Hunter's Discipline, and Ranger. In Sneak, take all 5 in Stealth, Backstab, Deadly Aim, Assassin's Blade, Muffled Movement, Light Foot, Silent Roll, and Silence. In Lockpicking, take Novice through Expert Locks, Golden Touch, Treasure Hunter, Locksmith, and Unbreakable. Golden Touch and Treasure Hunter are awesome for builds like these, but we like to imagine that the time he spent picking apart intricate creations of the Dwemer has also made him naturally gifted at lockpicking. In Smithing, take the Steel and Dwarven Smithing perks and Arcane Blacksmith. Primarily for upgrading his Dwarven gear and self-crafted Dwarven arrows, this is his only crafting skill. He has a scholarly interest in metallic alloys, and we roleplay his explosive creations made at the Atronach Forge as being an extension of this tree, which created a fun academic perspective of this skill tree. Finally, in Heavy Armor, take just one in Juggernaut so that you can then get Fists of Steel. Additional perks you'll want to seek out are Scholar's Insight, a Black Book ability from Winds of Change, this perk makes reading skill books provide two level increases for the skill instead of one, fitting for a scholar like the Tonal Scholar. The earlier you get this one, the more useful it will be. It's at the end of Raven Rock Mine, and we completed it around level 13, which was after acquiring our outfit and Zephyr. The next perk is Ancient Knowledge, the reward at the end of the quest Unfathomable Depths, which helps your smithing increase 15% faster. And it's an important roleplay moment for the Tonal Scholar, being bestowed with Dwemer knowledge from the Lexicon. It's worth noting that this perk is totally bugged in the vanilla game and doesn't even work. So if you have a patch for it, you can acquire it earlier to help raise your smithing skill, but if not, it's a fun roleplay moment regardless. Alright, it's time to dive into our favorite part of every build, the special moves. In this section, we combine gameplay elements to create a unique new ability. The Tonal Scholar's first special move is called Tonal Barrage, a combination of slow time and telekinesis arrows fired from Zephyr. 
With this move, he uses the combined powers of the Thum and the fastest bow in the game to unleash a near instant barrage of arrows. In the middle of combat, he can slow down time and suspend several arrows in the air, each fired with careful precision so that when time returns to normal, the stored kinetic energy is unleashed all at once. This is particularly useful against larger targets like dragons and Dwemer centurions, but it's also fun to try firing at multiple targets while time is slowed, and then seeing if you manage to hit them all at once. It's incredibly satisfying gameplay, and one of the best new additions from the Creation Club. Up next is Eyes That Watch, a combination of Aura Whisper, Adrenaline Rush, the Dwarven Drone Fly, and the Eagle Eye Perk. With this special move, he has all the time and stamina regen he needs to keep his eyes on his target and keep the bow in a fully drawn position until the right moment arrives to release. The remnants are known as the Eyes That Watch, so we thought it a fitting name for this eagle-eyed archery move. Up next is Dwemer Distraction, performed by giving your Dwarven Sphere companion a command to move to a strategic position and shouting throw voice directly at it. This distracts your enemies long enough for you to slip past them, or to reposition and pick them off from the shadows. The Tonal Scholar learned this technique from a sly hunter of relics with a Dwarven Spider Companion. They crossed paths in a Dwarven Ruin and agreed to split their loot evenly instead of crossing blades. Finally, we have Brass Cavalry. Before mounting your Brass Horse, summon your second Dwemer Sphere with the Ethereal Staff. While mounted, support the spheres with the explosive elemental arrows from the Arcane Archer Pack. We didn't intend for this to be our best mounted build to date, but it simply has no equal in our build catalog. Unleashing explosive ordnance from horseback is a ton of fun. Since accuracy doesn't matter as much with explosives, you can go a bit crazy. Also, the Dwarven Horse takes no damage, doesn't run out of stamina, and doesn't even take fall damage. It's absurd how good this horse is, and we found ourselves sticking to horseback combat any time we had to fight in the open world. The combinations of two Dwarven Spheres and his elemental explosives fired from an immortal horse made him an absolute force to be reckoned with. And with those special moves completed, we are ready to wrap up the Tonal Scholar. The creations add so much to this game and allow for even more creative and unique character building opportunities. We have plenty more builds to share with you all, and we thank you for your patience while we get them ready. As always, thanks for supporting us by watching our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help us keep the magic of Skyrim alive. We'll see you next time, right here on Skypothesis.